Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing a video on five things you should be doing right now to prepare for your Oxbridge application in October. The things we will go over in this video will also be applicable to other university applications, particularly competitive Russell Group universities. If you're new here, my name is Abby and I studied at Cambridge for four years and have just recently graduated. So I'm making this video as it's something that would have been so, so helpful to me just before I applied to Cambridge. And it would have made my life a lot, lot easier if I knew these five things before the application came around. Just a small disclaimer before we start, I'm not a director of studies, so I cannot give you a foolproof plan, but I can tell you the five things that really, really made a difference in my Oxbridge application and maybe take away a little bit of the stress for you guys. So with no further ado, let's get started. Okay, number one, we're gonna get straight out of the way is revising. Now, this is the most obvious one. And basically you just need to focus on your A-levels, make sure that this still comes first. So when you hear everything else I'm about to say in this video, just make sure that this is the priority because if you don't get the predicted grades you need, it may be a lot harder to have a successful application. Okay, so that's number one, keep your focus. Now, let's get into the good stuff. These next few points, do not take them lightly. When I tell you these things, trust me, they are the difference between an application being good and an application being bad. Okay, so number two is detailed research on the subjects that you are interested in. Now, this one seems obvious. Again, of course, you want to research the subjects that you're interested in. There are a couple of things that you should make sure you look into when doing this. Once you've found a subject you might be interested in, or a few, look into how different universities teach them. So you might really like a subject, but universities do often tend to teach in slightly different ways, they have slightly different ways that they run their courses, and this can have a big impact on how you find the course, how much enjoyment you get from it, and pretty much how you spend the next three to four years of your life. So do look into how the university itself runs this particular course. And in doing this, you also want to look at the topics taught because these may vary across university as well. And in some universities, you might love the topics and in some universities, you might hate them. And remember, this is three to four years of your life. You do not want to sign up for something that you're going to hate. Within this research, my top, top tip of researching is not just to look at the prospectuses or the university websites, reach out to students who are either studying the course that you're interested in or have studied because nobody knows the course better at a particular university than someone who has studied it there. If you're only looking at the promo videos and information on the website, that's probably pretty biased. The likelihood is that promo videos have been scripted and you're not gonna get completely true opinions in those. If you want a completely honest review, good and the bad, I would reach out to students studying currently or who have studied the subject you're interested in. I will discuss a little later in this video about how particularly at Oxbridge, the subject you study does become a pretty large part of your life. And so you do not want to spend three to four years studying something that you have pretty much zero interest in and it takes up your entire life and you absolutely hate university. Number three is outside reading. Now this means books, articles, anything that is to do with your subject of choice or the range of subjects that you're interested in. Now, this one for me is a game changer. This step could transform your personal statement and you don't need to spend a ridiculous amount of time on it. Getting a few books under your belt throughout the next few months is really, really going to benefit you when it comes to writing your personal statement later in the year. I'm gonna explain this one a little bit more. I never ever understood why we needed these extra things. I went to a workshop once where they told us about personal statements and why you have to do all this extra reading. And I thought, why do I need to extra read? I'm already doing my A-levels. You know that I want to do the subject. I've worked so hard on my grades. Why do I have to read more books? I'm trying to revise. But now after studying at Cambridge, I completely understand why they look for this kind of thing in your application. You see why the application process is so rigorous. And this is because when you get to Oxbridge, your degree does take up the majority of your life. Now, obviously this does depend on subject. I studied engineering and so for me, it really did take up pretty much my entire existence. But the reason the application is so rigorous is because of this. If you don't have the time before you go to uni to read one or two extra books in this subject and you have zero interest, the likelihood is when you get to uni and this subject takes over your whole life, you're not gonna enjoy it, you're not gonna want to do it and therefore you're unlikely to do as well. And so the reason they look for this is because they know what's coming. They know how hard they're about to work you. If they've seen someone put the extra work in, they look and go, this person, this person's ready for it. They've, they've already done what we're gonna make them do when they get here. 
So they're ready. Okay, so even though it sounds a bit stupid and effort filled now, especially when you're doing your A-levels, it is important. But remember the application process is in October. So these are all things you can start now, but you do have time to do. Now, don't get me wrong, just because I read a few extra books before I went to university did not prepare me for the workload or, or anything that they were about to throw at me, but they, they thought I was ready. I looked ready, so they let me in. Okay, that's all you have to do at the stage, you just have to get there. Just for reference, I applied for chemical engineering and the books I read were Stories of the Invisible by Philip Ball and The Four Laws That Drive the Universe by Peter Atkins. And I just made little notes as I read them and then these notes later were used to form paragraphs, points, sentences in my personal statement. And I don't think they were actually ever discussed in an interview, but they very likely could have been. If you take one thing from this video, do some outside reading on your subject before you write your personal statement. It can literally be the difference between your application and another application with the same grades. So number four is experiences and challenges. Now this one has very similar reasoning to the point before, the outside reading, because it also shows willing, motivation, and in this case, it can also show ability. So let's look at experiences first. By these, I mean open days, experience days. For example, I attended a Women's in Maths day at Oxford. I had no idea what I wanted to study at this point. I, I knew I was good at maths. I went to this day at Oxford, spent the day there. I absolutely hated it. I did not like the course. I did not like the way it was taught. I came home and I crossed maths off my option list and knew I would not be studying that at university. But then that's what then slowly led me to know what I was going to study. The way to get experiences under your belt is literally just to say yes to everything. Make yes your favorite word. Whenever someone offers something or suggests something, say yes, go to it, do it. When you're at your college or your sixth form and your tutor suggests something, yes, I'll be there, sign your name down, even if you can't be bothered, even if you think, oh my gosh, it's gonna be the worst day ever. Just go, you don't even have to participate that much. You just have to take something from it that you can write about later and you can make yourself look like you're taking your education further, you're motivated and you're willing. This is what they're looking for. Often experiences don't require an application so they could be quite easy to access. And I want to reiterate that you really don't have to break your back to go to them. I was so unsure of what to study. And I said yes to this Women's and Maths Day. I also said yes when I was offered to uh, shadow a PhD student at a local university. It was just offered by my college in my tutor. She said, who wants to do this? To be honest, I, I was a bit tired. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do it, but I wrote my name down because I knew it was for the greater good. And I went and I took the points I needed from it and I wrote about it and here I am today with my degree. So really it pays off. I also went to a summer camp at Cambridge. Again, I almost didn't go to this. This was almost a step too far. I thought a whole week in Cambridge in the summer, I'm not even sure what I want to do yet. Is, is that really the right choice? But my tutor was like, Abby, come on, realistically, it's gonna benefit you. And I was like, yes, you're not wrong, fine. I'll go and I went and it was actually quite interesting. And again, it was so, so good to put in my application. I definitely think that boosted my application. Now let's talk about challenges because these are slightly harder to access, but I think they're even better to put on your application. Now a challenge is something like, you may have seen them in your, through school or in college, uh, things like maths competitions or extra papers that you can sit. Now you may think, oh my gosh, extra papers. I do not want to sit an extra paper. I've already got my A-level study for, I've already got predicted grades to try and get. Um, Yes, I completely hear you and I 100% agree with you and that was also me when I was offered things like this. Why would I want to sit an extra exam? No thank you. The thing with these challenges is you can't often revise for them. They're usually made to make you think outside of the box. Now again, why do I want to do an exam that I can't even revise for, that I, I've never been taught? This, why would I do that? Well, when you get to university, particularly Oxford universities, and I'm sure it's very similar in other competitive Russell Group universities, you are not taught how to do something and then given a question on how to do that. You are taught, here's the method. Now, here's a question that isn't exactly what we showed you, but I want you to think outside of the box and see if you can get there. You might not be able to, but let's see what you can do. It's all a test of how much further can you go compared to what you were given, okay? So they want to see, before you even get to the university, if you're already thinking outside the box, they are immediately gonna be like, wow, they, they're already doing what we're about to make them do, which means they are so ready for this. If we let them into our university, they are going to do well and we want them. That's what you want them to think. So I was in a chemistry class one day and my chemistry teacher said, oh, there's this Cambridge chemistry challenge. It's meant to be really, really, really hard. You can't revise for it. It's nothing you've been taught before. Who wants to do it? My, my brain said, absolutely not. But my voice said, I'll do it. And off I did, signed up. 
and I ended up getting a gold award which is one of the highest awards you can get on there and that I think again had a massive impact on my application because the university could see that I could think outside the box I didn't just know things that I was taught I actually had the capability to take what I was taught think about it on a deeper level and apply it that's what they want to see that is so important so if you can sign yourself up to any challenge even if you don't do ridiculously well i thought i was going to fail it when i was sitting i thought this is insane i know zero answers but because often there isn't one single right answer or you get a lot of marks for your your effort to break down the question you may actually do a lot better than you think i cannot stress to you that everything i've said is something that i've completely done myself and I genuinely believe had a massive impact on my application. Now the final point is not the most useful in terms of what you need to do but it actually might be the most important point because this could be the difference of you managing to do all these things or you just completely giving up altogether. Point five is that you need to envision yourself at the university and tell yourself that you do deserve a place because I genuinely did not think I would get a place. I thought so many people that are much more clever than me. I used to sit in my maths class and people had skipped a year. And I was like, yeah, I've not, I've not managed that. Um, I didn't think I could get a place, particularly in engineering. I studied chemical engineering. And I thought, there's no way, no way they, they'll take me. I never had pure intentions of applying until I think it must have been a few weeks before the deadline. My tutor said, Abby, have you applied? And I was like, nope. And she was like, are you going to? I was like, nope. She was like, why not? And I was like, what's the point? I'm not going to waste my time. I'm not going to demoralise myself. I'm not going to get in. And she said, you're being an idiot. You're going to apply. So I said, fine, I'll apply, but I'm not promising anything. You know, I'm, I'm not getting in. And because of this attitude I had, I found it so much more difficult doing all of the things I've suggested. So when I was reading those books in summer, I was only doing it because I felt like I had to. I didn't think it was going to do anything. I didn't think I was going to get in. I thought, I'm wasting my time. It just made the whole process a lot harder, very, very draining, constantly doubting yourself. So if you want to make this entire process a lot easier, the first thing you need to start doing is believing that you can do it. Picture yourself getting an interview. Picture yourself getting a place. Picture yourself arriving at the university. And I know this just seems so silly, but if you believe you can do it, and if you know you've got the grades to back you up, then you're then gonna put a lot more effort and a lot more thought into all the other points I've said. So you're gonna do outside reading, you're gonna take great notes, you're gonna sign up to challenges, you're gonna sign up to extra experiences. And then when you come to writing your application, because you're so ready for it, because you believe that this is for you, everything's gonna flow. You're gonna be writing like this was made for you. Picture yourself there, believe that you can do it. Don't let yourself down before you've even started just because you think there might be someone else that's better out there than you. And you know what, there probably is, 100%. There's always, always someone better at something than you, but there's more than one space. So you and whoever could be better, you can both get a place. Do not doubt yourself, do not let yourself down, do not hold yourself back because you never know what might happen. Luck often falls in, what is it? What's that quote where it's like, luck comes to those it's a quote where you don't always have luck, but luck comes to those who put themselves in the way of it or something. Basically, people who try more are more often to get lucky. So, yeah, I'm not sure on the quote, but you know what I mean. Anyway, so that's the five points. Uh, they are all things that you can start thinking about now as you head through the rest of your year at sixth form or at college. Start saying yes. Start believing that you can get there and obviously focus on your A-levels and predicted grades because that is always number one. Number one, hope this has helped. As always, thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any more questions or requests that you want me to do a whole video on, comment those below as well. And yeah, please do like and subscribe and I shall see you in my next video.